Hello, my name is Con Igledon. This is my book, Wars of the Roses Trinity, and you're watching Book Zone. Has anyone read me books of mine? Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. You see, my God, suddenly I'm warming to you enormously. Um, Con, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Stormbird was a great success. Trinity is the second in the trilogy. But why do you think the story of the War of the Roses needed to be retold? Uh, first of all, as an author, I, I, mean, I look for good stories. That's what I've always looked for. I wasn't particularly interested in finding a story in the Roman Empire, but the story of Julius Caesar was great. The same goes for Genghis Khan. I was looking for great stories and I rejected a few, um, like King Arthur and Al Capone and a few others and the generals of Alexander the Great. But what drew me into Wars of the Roses was the fact that it wasn't well known at all. Um, it's hardly ever taught in schools. It's hardly ever been covered by historical fiction. So uh, those 30 years, everyone knows the term, Every, everyone, and they, they might know that Shakespeare wrote three plays about it, but it's not a well-known story. If I have to choose between a good story and bad history and good history and a bad story, then I will choose good story and bad history. So what period does Trinity cover and what are the big events in that time? It's a strange thing with history. I don't want to give the story away, even though the story you know, has been told historically. But it, it is the climax of one arc of the story with Richard, Duke of York, an extraordinary, an extraordinary man and, and no obvious, uh, no obvious black-hatted baddie at all. He was uh, treated rather cruelly by Shakespeare, but it wasn't completely made up. You describe the book as historical fiction. So what are the fictional elements and why is fiction needed when there are so many facts? Well, there, there'll always be gaps. Historical fiction sometimes has to fill gaps. For example, um, no one knows exactly what happened when Edward IV, aged 19, met Elizabeth Woodville, an older woman in her 20s who already had two children and a husband. Something went on between them. It's never been written down. Every historical fiction writer, whoever gets to cover those scenes, must make up a scene there and must include a scene that somehow a young 19-year-old, six foot four, at his absolute height of physical power and ambition, should meet an older woman and fall so madly in love with her that he married in private with something like her mother and one other witness. Even though he was the only possible contender for the English throne apart from Henry VI, he knew that and he still married her. You have to fill those gaps, otherwise it, the story makes no sense at all. Are there any other questions? Yes. So are there lessons for modern politicians and indeed electors that they can learn? We lose about 1,700 people a year on the roads. In this country, uh, a video of people being beheaded would not have worried Elizabeth I particularly. It was a society more used to death. I read a thing about 1914 uh, to 18 recently, and at the beginning of the war, they found a dead child that had been murdered, and they couldn't identify the child, so they put the photograph of that dead body on the front page of every newspaper. When you take the historical perspective into account, it allows you, it informs your view of the modern world, and I think it, it, it should give you strength. Con Igledon, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you.